We always want to give God the glory, amen? Amen. 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 Definitely amen. not trying to take any kind of glory. Amen. amen. <laughs> How many are excited tonight? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's awesome that we do serve a holy God. I love our you Even though there are times where we feel like so many things are happening in our lives. Yeah. Like God is not present. Or God is not able to reach you where you're at. We still serve a holy God. How many understand? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Saturday night, uh, last week, when I was going out, uh, Pastor uh, Kevin says, Frank, we want you to preach next week Saturday. And I said, glory be to God. Yeah. Amen. So the Bible calls us to be a people, if you will, to be ready in season and out of season. And I'm here to tell you that every day that God allows you to wake up, it's your season. Amen. Amen. How many are struggling? I understand that each and every one of us struggle every day in our walk. Yes. And so Saturday night is about prayer. And I know that some of us struggle really, really hard in how to pray. But God has called us to be a people, if you will, to pray. We serve a God that always, always wants to have what we call today an intimate relationship with God. How many understand? Amen. And when God says, I want to truly have a, an intimate relationship with you because He is a jealous God. How many understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And when God an intimate relationship with you he said to each and every one of us he says into me you see <laughs> not into you yeah. Yeah. come on now let's give God a yeah. so we know that Saturday night is about prayer amen? amen I too there are times where I struggle as well why because I've learned that I'm not exempt I can fall just like each and every one of you guys when I walk this walk with my Lord, you know, I, I follow Pastor Walter as he follows who? Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen? And so I too struggle in the areas of prayer, you know? Are there times that Frank don't want to get up and pray? Absolutely. I kid you not. Are there times where God calls me to fast and, and he says, Frankie, you've got to learn how to push away. And I said, Lord, push away from what? He said, from that plate. I love to eat for a little man. I love to eat. I'm just telling the truth. There's times I don't want to fast. But when God calls, we need to obey. God knows that each and every one of us need a breakthrough in life. How many of you people tonight don't need a breakthrough? I believe that each and every one of us, because I know there's there some people here and only know you know who God is speaking to that we need a breakthrough. Amen. How many of you people tonight don't feel like God is not answering your prayer? Don't raise your hands. Yeah, don't raise them. I remember when I first came to Christ and God started to do a lot of things in my life. I didn't understand what salvation was. I didn't understand what faith was. I didn't understand obedience for sure. Because I did whatever I wanted to do. But God started to answer prayers. And they were coming quickly. Why? Because we were building our faith up. How many understand what I'm saying? Okay. And as you start to mature in the things of God, God will start to back up a little bit. And you're starting to say, now, Lord, where are you at? It's not because he doesn't hear you. He knows every thought that runs through your head. And he even writes it down. If it be bad or good. I don't know if you guys knew that. And so there are times and seasons, right, that it feels like God is never present. And God's just saying, I just need to talk with you. I already know everything about you. And some of them will go and question God and say, what do you want to talk about? Amen. Some of us, God will wake us up in the midnight hour. The Bible says that to seek the Lord where he may be found in the midnight hour. He's not asking us to, or allowing us to wake up in the middle of the night after the midnight hour to get up and drink a cup of coffee or eat a donut. No, he's not. Because he wants to talk with you. Why? Because we've been ignoring him. 
How many can say amen to that? Amen. amen. So Saturday night is about prayer. Amen. So tonight we're going to pray for Pastor Walt and our spiritual mother. Amen. All our pastors that are not here today, from the greatest to the least, we're going to pray for you. Amen. We're going to pray for each and every one of you people. We're going to pray for your families, your children, and all those dear children. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. We might change, but He does not. We need change. But above all, God is just not trying to change our lives. God is trying to transform our lives. Amen? Amen. If we, we won't allow Him to transform our life, then there will not be a change in our life. Let me understand what I'm saying. Amen. I'm going to open up in a word right now. I'm going to read the book of Daniel, chapter 10. For those that have your Bibles, please open your Bible. And I'm going to ask you to please stand for the reading of the Word. Because we can stand for everything else. So we should give God the glory and the respect and the reverence to be able to stand for the reading of God. Amen? Amen. For those that can stand, I know you guys are tired. Amen? But God will strengthen you in the midst of your weakness. Amen? How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. You know, it's, you know, one of the things I share with you people is like, I do this when I'm when I'm allowed to. It's a privilege to to serve God. It's a privilege to to seek on the behalf of the kingdom of God. You know, the sad thing is this: that we would come to the house of David with no expectancy to hear from God. We might as well stay home and watch the football game and do what men and women do the way. I'm just saying. In chapter 10 of the book of that. Again, let me remind you people, men and women of God, this is about prayer. Some of us have a hard time doing this. And people say, well, how do I pray? Just the same way you talk to your brothers and sisters. Just like that. Amen? Amen. If you speak in Filipino, he knows that language too. The only thing that God does not know to do is to lie. Amen. Amen. Other than that, He knows all languages. He, he really does. He created them all. In the chapter uh, of Daniel, book, chapter 10, verses 1. And in the third day of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshar. And the things that were true. We know that the scripture says that everything that God wrote is true. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for who you are. Lord God, tonight I pray, God, that you will hide me behind the cross. That you will anoint my lips, Lord God. And that every, every word that proceeds out of this mouth will be yours. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. You probably wondered, like, how long is he going to keep us standing? Brother Frank sure likes to talk. I do. That's the men that work with you. Amen. You know, I know that Mama Louie always likes to tell jokes. Amen. And we, as, as preachers and teachers and, and pastors, when we preach and all that, you know, we, we do tell a lot of jokes. So I'm going to give you one tonight as well. Amen. Amen. I don't tell much jokes, but once in a while, I like to bless my brothers and sisters. Amen. And so, I asked this question. If everyone that owned the Bible in this whole entire world was to open it at the same time, guess what would have happened? We'd have a dust storm. <laughs> Some of you guys will get it later on. <laughs> try another one. We're going to try another one. Word be to God. For you to have fun. What do you think about that, brother? You got to have fun with God, truly. You do. You do. You really do. We don't want to come in like, oh, stiff neck man. We've been like that all our lives. Listen up. Here we go. He says the words are true. But the time is appointed was long. How many of you tonight have been praying or at any given time? And you know that 
We've all been appointed to something, to do something. We've all been called for a great commission. Maybe you don't see yourself something great. Amen? Yeah. But if you see yourself the way God sees you, you are somebody. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen? A lot of times we see ourselves the way the world perceives us. And God say, no sweetheart, no son, no daughter, see yourself the way I see you. Amen? Amen. And some people say, well, that brother's ugly or that sister's ugly. And we can easily just say, this is a face that mama can love. Amen. Who cares about all that other stuff? Amen. Amen. We're not people of Israel, amen? Amen. amen. We're not. Amen. Amen. We're not. We're not supposed to be. God didn't call us. So he calls us, you know, sometimes that even our prayer seems like a long time. And even when God has called us to do a great commission, it seems like it's never going to come to pass. But sometimes you just have to be patient and wait upon the Lord. Amen? In the midst, like, some of you guys, like, and I too, I, I just said that sometimes I have a hard time praying. But God has told me, Frank, man, let's just always put your shoes under your bar. So when you get down there to grab your shoes while you're down there, start praying. Oh, man. Amen? Amen. God says, what? Lord, I got a lot of complaints. He says, that's okay. I'm the complaint department. <laughs> yeah. You can complain to your brothers and sisters. And the Bible says, stop murmuring and complaining. Because your brothers and sisters ain't trying to hear it. Amen. They'll tell you that too. Amen. Okay. Then I'll tell, me, you know, tell me what's really going on. Let me pray for you. Amen? Well, let's pray together. And God says, you can come to me at any given time. I'll listen to you. He's your daddy. Amen? Amen. He already knows. God, how come I haven't got a brand new Mercedes? <laughs> and God says, are you kidding me? This is about prayer. Amen? Sometimes it seems like it takes a long time. And sometimes God just takes a while. Why? Because he's trying to get us to a place in our walk with him that you need to be still. Yeah. You just need to be still. Yeah. Man, this taking forever. It's for the Any time now, God? Be still. Paul, before starting his ministry, he had to wait like 14 years after he was called. Sat him down. The Lord sat him down. And just wait. Why? Because he wanted to build him up. I myself personally took me a long time to understand a lot of things that pertain to the kingdom of God. I wish I would have gone through what Paul did on his way to Damascus, persecuting the church. He has an encounter with God the Father himself, right? <coughs> on his way to Damascus. The Lord knocks him off. The Lord God. Father God knocks him off his horse. Some of us are like that. We're on a high horse. Thinking that we got all this, you know, bags and chips and we're all of that. <laughs> so he knocks him off. He has an encounter and he falls off the horse. And the next thing he hears is the voice that talks to him. <clears throat> How many have read the story? Saul, Saul, why not for And it's Jesus that's talking to him. And on his way, he gets to an end, and the Lord speaks to a, his people, a man named Ananias. Not Ananias, it's a fight. And he says, Ananias, I need you to go and lay hands and pray for Saul. And Ananias says, oh no, I'm not going. And the Lord, are you crazy right now? He's killing your people, He's kill he'll kill me too. Because he was on his way to kill these people. But he had to obey. So he goes and he lays hands on Ananias to receive his sight. Isn't that awesome? A man like that, all in the same day, was to be able to have an encounter with God the Father, spoke to the Lord Jesus Christ, and healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. By one day. Some of us, we have to wait like 30 years. Oh, yeah. I'm saved today, right? Yeah. God saved you a long time ago. Glory be to God. At a point in time. Sometimes it seems like a long time. 
And I'm still just in, in the first verse. Amen? And sometimes we just got to do it like that so you people can get it. This is about prayer. We're going somewhere with this. Lay it out the floor, man. God has appointed each and every one of us. And Daniel writes and he says, I understand, he says, and he understood, the scripture says, the things, right? And he had understanding of the visions. He understood it. He understand and had an understanding of the vision. See, a lot of times when we come to church on the street, some of you folks is not, sometimes don't get it. We as people of God, and God brings us here to, to places like church on the street, and I even hear men sometimes say, man, this ain't never going to work out. Like, like, like now. So of what's going on and we're moving on. How many are with me? And we start to doubt God. Man, we ain't there to get a place. Right? But because we, so many people don't understand the vision Amen. that God has about Pastor Wong. This thing been going on for how long, brother? 40 years. 40 something years. Right? And you guys can be sure, you men and women of God can be sure that when God ordains a ministry and it's gone this long, you can be sure that it's not going to fall apart. Whatever God ordains will never, ever fall apart. It just won't. If God has ordained you and you fall apart, that's because you got out of the will of God. Amen. You should never ever fall apart. Brother Frank, it's easy said and done. Yes. Because I know what it's like to fall apart. Amen. But I also learn how to trust in the Lord Amen. with all my heart and lean not on them all and understand. Amen. I'll be honest with you people. I don't worry about anything. I don't worry about my children. I just pray every day. Every night when I get up. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I'm asleep, but I'm conscious minded. I'm still awake. And I'm talking to the Lord. Why? Because He'll visit you up here too. Amen. Instead of just allowing the enemy to bring all kinds of stuff into your head. And you wake up talking to God. And you yeah. think like you've been asleep, but you have, but you haven't. And why? Because you're conscious minded. How many understand what I'm saying? Amen. We have to come, people, to a place in our walk with Christ and understand that God is there for you at all given time. Amen. When you can just give everything to Him. See, a lot of times we as people, we get so confused real quick. And instead of running to the cross, we find ourselves running from the cross. Amen. In the book of Daniel. So he understood the vision. And that's how we should be. I don't know if, I know the men know who Pastor Jay is, right? Yeah. Hill, Mr. Hill? Yeah. You guys ever seen his vehicle? Yeah. No? You know what his vehicle said? Yeah. Catching the vision. Catching, Catching he's an ex football player, NFL. And he's a pastor for this church. <coughs> he does ministry for the men. Catching the vision. So he understands it. We too, as people of God, we have to understand the vision where God is taking Pastor Walt and us. He's our father. He's our father, Abraham. How many understand? Amen. See, we, we got to pray for these things. Amen. And got to believe by faith that it's going to come. The scripture says that all those things would be not as they're already done. That's faith. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for in the evidence things not seen. But I'm already believing by faith that we're going somewhere. Amen. God has taken us somewhere else. This is the second building that I've been in while serving church on the street for the Lord. First we were living in houses. Then he gave us a church, a small church. Then he gave us this. And know this, people, I've learned this from experience that whatever you leave behind, when God tells you to get up and go, right, they'll always give you something better. Yeah. Always. God never gives us leftovers. Like some. I'm just saying. Verse 2. And in those days, Daniel was what? 43, three full weeks. Verse 3. And ate not pleasant bread. See, 
sometimes we as people, he said, Daniel says, you know what? I'm not going to eat that stuff. He's in captivity. We, on the other hand, not throwing rocks to anybody, we have to ask the Lord to give us the strength and when to fast, when to back away from the table, and don't eat everything that we like to eat or it's pleasant to the eyes. How many understand? And he says he's just, he just stopped for three weeks, four whole weeks. And as we go on to read, he says, I didn't even eat any flesh, meaning what? Meat. Some of us like meat a lot. You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> he said that in Spanish for those that don't understand. Meat. Brother Mark, he said loves meat. <laughs> Me too. But I like vegetables too. Yeah? So he said, I didn't need none of that stuff. And the reason he said that is God is telling us tonight, he says, you know what? Sometimes you just have to abstain from that kind of stuff because you know what it does? How many of you have eaten and all of a sudden you want to? Fall asleep. Pansa llena corazón contra. Full stomach, please heart. Right? It makes us lazy to where we just stop. And we're not focusing on the thing that God has called us. So we stop praying. The devil, he's tricky. But he calls his people also to be what? Crafty as a serpent, but gentle as a dove, meaning the Holy Ghost. He gives us wisdom. Understand it inside when we stop feeding the flesh all the time. That's why we struggle in our prayer life because we're always given to the flesh constantly. The more you give to the spiritual man, the more you give to your spiritual woman, and you just put that old man or that old woman into submission and say, God, I'm ready. What do you have for me? And then he starts to bless you. When you start to obey, and then we get sidetracked with the blessing, right? We get blessed so much that we take our focus off of God, because we focus so much on the blessing and not the blesser. Amen. 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 Am I in the book or not? Amen. Just say, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came to flesh, neither wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself, verse 3, at all, till three whole weeks were what? Four feet. How many of you guys, again, struggle in fasting and praying? A lot of us do. But God can condition us. You just have to be willing to do so. See, in the flesh, we can do things even when we exercise. 15 minutes, go, 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 go. Then after the 15 minutes, tired. But if you push yourself past the 15, then you catch your sick and win, and you can roll. Come in your stomach. Just push yourself. And God will, he'll train you up. Some of us just say, you know what, Lord? I'm just going to believe by faith. I'm going to believe by faith. I'm going to just not eat breakfast. Right? He says, not. Can you give me the strength, please? He will. Because you're asking. He's not going to tell you no. Because he knows what you're trying to do. And you need his help. None of us can do it without him. He'll even give you the strength to go breakfast and lunch. And then you condition yourself. Just like you do when you exercise. Every day, miss a meal. Made a day, you'll, you'll miss breakfast. Or maybe lunch. Or maybe even dinner. At least one. Work on that. Work on that. By the time you know it, you're like, wait up. How many are shot? Right? And then God will put it in your heart. He'll put it in your spirit and say, Lord, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really joining this. I'm really digging this. Right? And then they'll go like one whole day, 24 hours. You know? And you just get stronger. Let me advise you this. That don't do that without giving it the word. Amen. Then you're just losing weight. <laughs> You know, you're Anytime you fast and pray, use the word. And the word will reveal exactly what you need for your life. The word of God will reveal. Why? Because the old man is dying, right? And he'll show you exactly what the need is, not only so much in your life, but in the lives of your loved ones as well.
Some of us have loved ones that need to come to Christ, but we don't know how to minister. But I'll tell you what, if you just begin to fast and pray and seek the Lord, right? And he'll bring them in. He'll bring them in. And God gets the glory. What are you talking about? Yeah, go one day. He'll build you up two days, three days, even a whole week. Go a whole week without eating. Hello. God can do that. Amen. This is not about me, but God has trained me. I can go three days, three whole days, without water, without no food. And the Bible says that we need to wash our face. Because the old man starts to die and the fish starts to get greasy, boily, because the, the carnal body is dying. Even though it dies every day as we get older, we just kind of help it a little bit more so our spiritual mind can grow and stay in tune with God. How many minutes? Three days, Brother Frank. Hello. He does that. I've even gone out, and it's not about me, in the midst of my fasting and all that. And we don't want to tell people when God has us fasting. We don't want to blow the trumpet. That's your reward. I've gone out and work out, or in the streets, I, I look to work. And I go three or four days without eating and still doing hard labor work. Don't bother you not. Just get accustomed to the things of God. Everything I know today. God is always trying to give us a victory. God is always trying to show us where we're going. You know, the scripture says that God will not give you a vision without a provision. He will not. We serve a God of order. God loves you. He's not going to give you a vision because the Bible said a man without a vision shall perish. He's not going to give you a vision and take you all the way to the promised land and just show it to you and say, you can't go in. He's not going to do that. He's going to give you a provision, meaning he's going to provide all the way there. And the, the beauty of that, then he goes with you. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. How many of you asked yourself, Lord, or say, Lord, where are you taking me? Some of us don't even know our calling. Some of us don't even know our gifts. None of those things. And God says to each and every one of us in the book of Jeremiah, Lord, you know what? I just pray, man. Show me what am I to do. You call me out of darkness and into the marvelous light. For what reason? What is my purpose? How many have asked God that? Come on, we, we won't take that step and say, Lord, I want to know. I want to know what did you create me for? Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1, he says, I formed you and fashioned you in your mother's womb. When I read that, I took that real, real person. He mean, Lord, you took time to fashion me with your hand. He could have spoken into existence. He could have spoken each and every one of you. He said, but I formed you in your mother's womb. And I ordained you for such a time as this. Amen. 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 What is my great commission? Look, see, we get so caught up in a lot of a lot of things. Even church on the street. I know we hear this all the time. We've been hearing it forever and day since I've been in church. The brothers and sisters. We look at the brothers and sisters. Blah, blah, blah. But it's the truth. We get hung up in our flesh really, really easy. Just wait on the Lord. The book of Isaiah says, For those who wait on the Lord, He will renew your strength. Amen. Amen. We have a hard time with that, with that waiting part. Poor little word. We don't like to wait. We're like that microwave generation. <laughs> there you go. Right? We, we do have a hard time waiting. We do. You hear the pastor all the time says, What? Well, love waits. Not. We sometimes have a really, really hard time of waiting, even when we're out in the streets waiting on the bus. And we're like, we're sitting on the bus, we'll even go out and step on the middle of the road. Man, what time is that bus coming? <laughs> you already know. 
You already know what time that bus is coming. You know the schedule. You've been riding that bus forever and a day, but you still don't want to win. All right? Verse 7. And Daniel all saw the vision. Verse 7. For the man that was with him saw the vision. See, some of us, we need to just get together, get on the same page, and look at the vision that God has for them. Pastor Walt, church on the street. See, some of you people don't believe that God has taken us somewhere I am. I'm excited. Even yeah. before I came here from Tucson, I already know what was happening here. Why? Because my, my pastor is still in touch with him. Vice so versa. I already knew that we're moving. God had already spoken. And he's moving us. And we're like, man, maybe I need to go to D.C. Because I don't think God's going to take us to the right place. So I'm, always, I'm just going to do my six months and try to get a job. You're, because we're not trusting in the Lord. I've never known God to fail me. Amen? Amen. Never. Like I said earlier, I don't even worry about nothing. I don't worry about my children. They're grown up. I don't worry about my grandkids. Because God says to each and every one of us that he is the father to the father. Amen. We wear me. If God's taking care of you here and now, He's a God of order. He's taking care of your children too. Because you can believe that. My sons, they tell me they're all grown up. My daughter said, Dad, man, man, we're happy that you're at where you're at. You know, of course, I visited him and all that. He said, Well, we're glad. We're glad. My boy told me, Dad. Ever since I was a little boy, I wanted to be like you. I said, I know me more. Every, every boy wants to be like your dad. And then he drops a bomb on me. I want to be just like you, daddy, but I don't want to go to prison like you. I don't blame you. I raised my boys in church. Amen. And thank God they don't go to jail and all that stuff. Are you still hard headed? Absolutely. They always like me. Damn, man, that little boy, man, he's hard hit. You leave him alone. My grandkids. Man, he, man, he's terrible. No, he's not. You are worse than that. That's just retribution, son. <laughs> just saying. Leave my grandkids alone. Don't want them. Don't spank my, my children. I leave that up to you. No, he was there. Back in the book of Daniel. And he said unto me, verse 11, we're skipping, we were, we were going to it. In verse 11, he said unto me, O Daniel, a man of great what he loved. When I read scripture like that, and, and he talks about the beloved, it reminds me of, of John, the beloved John, who wrote the book of John, 1 John, 2, 3 John, and Revelation, the beloved. Amen. Understand the word that I speak unto thee. And stand, he says, upright. He sounds just God tells the same thing. Stand upright with me. Stand in attention when, I'm, when you're before me. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. We have to give reverence to God at all given time. How many understand? So he tells him, stand upright. For unto thee I am now sending. And he's talking about, he said, and I'm going to make it really short. I don't have that much time. So Daniel was praying, right? And all of a sudden, the prayers are not going through because the what? The devil is running between the heavens and the earth. Right? In the third heaven. I don't know if you guys know about that. We, the first heaven is the one that you can see. The second one is like where the jets and, and all the astronauts go. And the third one is where no man is gone. And the enemy roams through there. And if your prayers are not effective because you don't know how to fast and pray, and you just get lazy when you start praying, these just won't bombard the heavens. Amen. So the adversary stuff, and, and the Bible says in the book of Daniel, he said that when he prayed, he says that, the, that God says, Daniel, from the beginning you had understanding and you stood firm. He says, I heard you. I heard you. But then there was a block. <coughs> 
21. And so Michael intervenes. But the Bible says that God sent Gabriel to go help him to have a breakthrough so he can get your prayer up there. And I thank God today because of what Jesus did that we can come to the throne of grace boldly and say, Lord, man, give me the power. He says, I already have given it to you that we can dispatch angels, right? Heaven and earth. Amen. No one else but us are able to dispatch angels you. in the thousands, in the tens of thousands. You. There's no reason why your prayers cannot be answered Amen. unless you're being sloppy. Amen. You. Amen. you. And turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. We're not going to be also just talking about the form of God. Some of us, we have a tendency to like uh, get so relaxed and pull our even our helmets. That's why you always get beat up at night. <laughs> <laughs> the helmet of salvation Preacher, is for brother. that because the adversary, he's always going to be throwing fiery darts while you're trying to sleep. And you wrestle, you turn like a door hinge. And you're restless because you haven't found yourself in the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus Christ. And so you take the helmet off thinking you got this. And he beats you up. He does. I'm sure all of us have experienced that. Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to be... Verses 17 and 18. And the 17 says, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Anytime you read your scripture and you see a capital S talking about the Holy Spirit. When you see what the small letter is, it's talking about man's spirit. Really, Brother Frank? Yes. <laughs> the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Verse 18, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. In the Spirit. No carnal thing, no carnal thinking can come to God and He's not going to hear you. You're in the flesh. And God does not deal with that. Nothing that is flesh is of God. Anything that you do or think of the flesh is not of God. God doesn't even touch that. He doesn't even care that. Because the flesh separates you. Why? Because you're in disobedience. And disobedience, disobedience, the Bible says the form of this Christ. What? We fall from grace. The Bible says, Romans, that we all fall short of the glory of God. That if we're falling short of the Lord, we're falling from grace. How many understand? Yeah. Does that mean he's going to let you go? No. But if you keep doing what you're doing, he'll give you over to the destruction of your flesh. Some of you, or some of us, I should say, won't make it back. Only God knows. I'm not trying to go there no more. I'm, I'm enjoying this ride. Yeah. We're going to the outreach. I'll be cool, Mike. I don't want to drive. Let yeah, Jesus drive. Amen? Let him drive. The more you get a hold of God's garment, like the woman had an issue with that, the more you see what God will do. And you'll know that you're going to make it. It is by faith. Praying always with all prayer supplication in the spirit and watch. Therefore, unto all what perseverance, got to be sharp, always looking for all the saints. Even though sometimes we're restricted to, to talk to the brothers and sisters, praise the Lord, amen, we still got to pray for God. They're part of the body. How many understand? How many of us today, even in the midst of, of praying, like, well, God will put it in your spirit, Right? Pray for the brothers and sisters that the adversary is taking out of you. Amen. So important. So important. We get so caught up within ourselves because we think it's about always about us. God said, get out of yourself. 
Let's try it. God does not use prideful people to resist the Lord. When we become prideful, the Bible says that we're arrogant and selfish people. We have no tendency of looking further than our own. It's all about me. Yo, yo, yo. And God says, that's no, not about you. It is. It's about the kingdom. When we lose brothers and sisters out of here, the adversary takes them off. I, I give this illustration every time. And I'm going to be clear. Just like you have a hand, and it's out of joint. Does the hand just hurt? No. The whole arm hurts. And that's how we are. When we lose our brothers and sisters, and they go back out there, just as they're hurting out there, we should be hurting for them as well. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to be praying for our pastors, for each and every one of us. Some of you people that don't know how to pray, we might want to get with the brothers and sisters. That's how I was talking. I didn't know. <laughs> Can someone please see me? Amen. Amen. With all purpose of the And in closing. In the book of Acts, there's a story. An apostle named Philip. The Bible said a man full of the Holy Spirit. And he was sent to Samaria, to the region of Samaria. Because there was a person there called Simon the Sorcerer. And the people were all scattered throughout the region. But God sent an anointed man, full of the Holy Ghost, named Philip, one man, to eradicate and turn that whole city of Samaria for the glory of God. How many understand? Amen. Why? Because Simon the Sorcerer was being used by Satan, and he had that whole city all jacked up. All jacked up. But he sent Simon to deal with it. And today God is sending people out to the outreaches, a bunch of Simons, if you will. Amen? To eradicate and turn this world of time. In the midst of your praying and fasting and seeking the throne of God, that God will give you a super anointing to be able to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost a lot of times we as people, we neglect the power of their hands. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for church on the street. Yes. Father, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor, because it all belongs to you. Tonight, God, we pray, God, that you will give us revelation, Amen. an understanding, oh God, of the vision that Pastor Wall has. You will take us to the promised land. God, that you will take us to this new building. Only you know, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, where you're taking us. God, but just give us a teachable spirit to be able to listen to you, Lord, and to follow our leaders wherever you take us, Lord God. We're going to be grateful people. Pray for Pastor Walt tonight, Miss Louis. All the pastors of church on the street, they're all the country. We have pastors in New Mexico. We have pastors in Mexico. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray tonight that you will give us a spirit of life and how to pray to seek your faith. Not just to see your hand move, but to seek your faith. We're trusting and believing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Whatever you're going to do for church on the street, God, we're already calling that as done already. In the name of Jesus, I pray. God, that you will give these people a hunger and a thirst, Lord God, to seek you, that they will pray. God, we know that sometimes we become sloppy, but we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're able to intercede for us when we don't know how to pray. And I believe with all my heart, Lord God, that you call us out of darkness and into the marvelous light for a purpose. So we're just going to trust tonight, Lord God, in all the things that your word says that you're doing. So Father, we're claiming already that you have a building for us. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.